Hi, my name is Eddie Chez. I'm the Director of Media Technologies for the Nonverbal Group. We primarily, within this space, we use it to uh, do studies focusing on human behavior where we analyze people and try to break down their behavior and then try to create video content um, which we can use to put it online and then people can subscribe to it and then learn about the topics that we present. Our office is currently located in an old building that was built in 1876 approximately. Uh, as you can see, the beams are very old beams on top of which we have an exposed ceiling. Um, due to new neighbors that have moved into the office above us, it's extremely loud and we have uh, a lot of impact and also airborne sounds that are transmitted through the floor as well as mechanically through the structure itself. So what we've started to do, and uh, since May of 2016, it's currently August, from May until now we've been researching the best way possible to isolate the problem and um, mitigate the impact and airborne sounds that are coming through. So what we decided to do is we're going to fill all of the cracks with acoustical sealant. We're also going to use expanding foam, as you can see this way. We've got a lot of uh, wide beams here. And if you look up here at the camera, you see there's a lot of, if you come this way, you can see the gaps that are between the beams. So we actually have to fill that with expanding foam. Uh, we've got holes that golf balls can come through. If you look up through the pipes, you've got a lot of gaps there. And you also have the gaps between the actual floorboard themselves. So what we need to do is to use acoustical sealant to fill in the gaps, expanding foam to close all the holes. And um, after that, we're actually going to use this material called Roxul Safe and Sound. It's uh, made of mineral wool and uh, we're going to use it to fill in the joist beam gap or the, uh, the gaps between the joists and we're also going to use we're to using two layers of that then we're going to use uh, corning wear or corning uh, r19 fiberglass it's like craft one side craft paper on one side and then insulation on the other and then we're going to use that one as the third layer so what we're going to do uh, after that is use a material called um, Noise Stop. So Noise Stop is uh, one, eighth, one eighth of an inch thick and it's made of mass loaded vinyl. Uh, we're getting it from acoustical sur surfaces or ASI. Um, and what we're going to do is once we have the channels filled, we're going to suspend and attach the mass loaded vinyl to all of the joists and then pretty much create just like a, encapsulate the office with this mass loaded vinyl. Um, that's hopefully going to take care of a lot of the airborne sound um, and deaden some of the impact sounds. The other thing that we're going to do is uh, use these, these clips called RSIC clips or uh, resilient sound isolation clips that we're going to actually attach to also the joists. Once the vinyl is up, then we'll put those in, uh, in a particular pattern that will then will uh, attach hat channels to. And the hat channels kind of look like, like this. We've got some outside. Um, once we have the hat channels up, then we're going to attach 5 8 inch sheetrock, uh, fire code type X sheetrock. And then we're going to um, on the perimeter, wherever sheetrock meets a brick wall face or uh, a beam, we're going to leave about a quarter of an inch and fill it in with uh, the acoustical glue to create like a barrier so that impacts, uh, impact vibrations can be deadened and minimize the transmission into the beam itself. So we're also going to expose the, uh, the north face wall. So as you can see here, the entire north side of the office is sheetrock. We don't really know what's back there, so we're going to expose it. And then if there's any gaps and cracks, we're going to again use the USG acoustical sealant 
and uh, expanding foam to close up any gaps. We're also going to, um, as you can see right now, we've got electrical uh, conduits. So we're actually going to put these into the wall and then we're going to uh, back them with uh, 3M putty pads. And then we're going to, once it's all done, to close it, we'll put in, there's, there's like, a, um, uh, like a neoprene sleeve that we'll put over and then we'll put the, uh, the face to close up the outlets. So hopefully that will minimize the sound there also. Um, once that's done, we're going to um, then again fill it with mineral wool and uh, R19, but we're, we're not sure if uh, the R19 will be applicable on the wall also because most of the sound's coming from the ceiling. So we may just go with two layers of um, rock sole safe and sound in the walls. Then we're going to close it up with the mass loaded vinyl. And then we're going to uh, close it up with the sheetrock. All of the mass loaded vinyl sheets, we're actually going to use uh, Gorilla Tape to seam them together. Uh, so this way any sound that can get through the layers of vinyl will then be sealed with the Gorilla, uh, Gorilla Glue Tape. So it's about um, 1,128 square feet. Once we've completed the ceiling and also walls, then we're going to take measurements with the decibel uh, meter. So we're going to do a before and after reading to see how much in, um, in drop the decibel levels have gone. The goal is to discover how much this type of installation will reduce the amount of sound that's being received through the walls and also how much sound we're actually, uh, is actually escaping out of the room. So we don't know how long it's going to take, maybe about a month, we're not sure. This is the first for us. We're documenting this for not only our benefit but also for the benefit of everyone who watches this because there's so few uh, beginning to end documentations of this kind of process. It's, it's very hard to find any um, complete uh, documentation of all the processes so that's what we're doing today so what the guys have been doing here is any um, non supporting walls they've actually taken them down uh, they've covered all the floor with protective paper so this way the wood can be um, any kind of scratching and damage that can happen to the floor would be minimized then um, once everything's cleared out they're going to start taking down the walls um, taking down the, the lights, the track lighting, they're all going to come down also. And um, one thing they've already done is if you see here, because this is an old building, it uses um, these sprinkler heads were actually pointed up into the joist channel. So the, uh, we have to get the fire sprinkler company to come in and turn them so that they face down so that um, the proximity, uh, so that it has enough of a clearance between the sheetrock ceiling and also the sprinkler head because before they were facing up and it would have been too minor of a clearance so in order for us to not be in any violation we have to have those turned down uh, so that we're in, a, in essence will be in, uh, within the code regulations of New York City. Um, and finally the last thing we're going to also do is we're going to have to treat these windows somehow because as you can see these are single pane um, we can't change these windows because it's historical. The original, they're from 1867, so we can't really touch them. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat the space in between the window and the uh, outer or the inner edge of the brick face. And we're probably going to get um, uh, uh, blackout blinds and also we're going to get really thick acoustical uh, curtains to minimize the amount of sound that's coming into our space. So that's another thing we're going to do here. Well, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this little um, pre-project video. And I hope that the information that we're going to share with you, not only in this video, but also uh, that we're going to watch through the work that the contractor is doing, is going to be valuable to you and also to your installations. For all of the vendors uh, that we're going to be using, I hope that this video can help validate some of the characteristics of the materials that you are selling and um, maybe it could be useful to any of your clients also. So 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.